Simulating cloth and hair in Blender is tough. And I, for one, am, I've never been able to get a simulation of any description that I'm 100% happy with. So um, when we uh, took on uh, the, the CodeLens project last year, it was vital that we had a way to correct and put the artist's hand back in to simulations in Blender. And uh, so we came up with a pipeline to do this. And we came up with a, a way of doing it, uh, which is what I'm going to show you today. How we can go in to a simulation in Blender and then fix it up after the fact. Now, we should take a look at cloth first because that's an easy one. That's an easy one. I think a lot of people actually might, might already be a little au fait with the, the, the technique for, for doing cloth. Um, but for hair, it's slightly more tricky. So we'll tackle that next. With that said, let's jump in. Okay. So here's my animation with Cloth Sim already executed. It's okay. There are moments in it that really I find jarring and I'd like to fix, but I've been beating my head against this Cloth Sim for some time. I don't want to keep running it and running it and running it. I'd prefer to just get my hands dirty and go in and fix it. So let's take a look at how we do that. This technique is something that it's, it's, I think it's fairly well known. It's not very well documented, but I do know that it's, it's, this is not a unique solution but I've discovered this is something that uh, other people are doing. So I can't take credit for it. But the variation I use for hair is pretty unique. So we'll show you this, the simple, the cloth fix first, and then we'll go to that. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have this add-on that is packaged with Blender enabled. The import, export, new tech, MDD format. Just give that a tick. And then once you've got your cloth sim done to our standard that you are somewhat okay with, just go to export Lightwave Point Cache MDD. So this is uh, uh, just, I've literally just the, I just want the, the cloth object selected. That's important. Um, give it a name. And vital to the process is make sure your start frame is set to zero. Now, you may have noticed, I'm just going to click Export MDD on that. So start frame to zero, end frame, whatever your end frame is. So even though my simulation doesn't start till frame 100, my when, when I export the MDD, I'm making sure that I have it set to start frame on zero. And one of the reasons I, I, I set my start frame to 100 is firstly, it's good practice. If you're working in a studio, typically you're going to be asked to, uh, to animate from frame 100. So you've got room to add frames before, uh, you know, to add handles or whatever you need to to the animation. So that's just good practice. But also with this technique, quite often the MDD export, um, it, it, it balks a couple of frames at the start. Um, and if you've got a, a 100 frame buffer to that, then you're going to be pretty much set uh, with this. So it should be fine. So let's take a look. So this is, this is uh, that, this is also, it's worth knowing, there is no sort of like progress wheel for that. It's just... Blender won't respond until it's done. Um, doesn't mean it's broken, it's just how it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to rename the duplicate ponchogeo.mdd. And I'm going to turn off the uh, modifiers. So none of these modifiers are currently active, so it doesn't do nothing. I'll turn off the sim as well so we don't see that. So that's what we currently got. And I will import the lightwavepointcache.mdd and import the file I just made. Start frame again to zero. Step to one, that is fine. Import. This will take a moment. But what it's going to do is we're going to start seeing some, um, some keyframes appear in our dope sheet. There we go. Lots and lots of keyframes. These keyframes are shape keys being turned on and off. So what it has done, it has brought in for every single frame in our animation a new shape key for that mesh as it moves it through the simulation. And the good thing about shape keys is that they can be tweaked and manipulated. So we can go through the individual frames and sculpt these if we want to. Or we can just make overarching changes with new shape keys. So. A bit of good practice. Ooh, accidentally moved that there. Let's save this. And what we're going to do is in our dope sheet, we'll roll down these keys, we'll select all, 
and we'll control G. There we go. So I've selected all the channels, hit control G and went ba and I'm just going to call this channel base keys. And that way I can keep those those existing keys for the animation all separate in one channel that I don't, you know, I don't so I don't muck them up accidentally. Now obviously I can go in and, and tweak those keys as I want to, but obviously you've got to do it one by one by one by one. And there's, you know, there's a good 400 frame, well, 300 frames in this animation. So what might be easier is to start creating uh, tweaks. I'm just going to enable this little uh, icon here, which allows me to sculpt a keyframe on, on top of the keyframe. And yeah, that's, that's that. So let's, let's take a look and see what's the first thing that upsets me with this. This whole intersecty bit is a bit naff. So I'm just going to go in and sculpt and I'm going to smooth that. It's a bit weird. I'm not quite sure why it does that. Uh, and I will insert a keyframe and I'll just dial it back. And then remove it. It's not quite strong enough, so I can go in and add some more. So I'm essentially just selectively smoothing that. Now, don't do too much changes on one key. You know, we've got as many keys as we need to punch this in, but I'm being a little cheeky on this one. <clears throat> okay, so I've jumped into a time lapse just to spare you having to watch me noodle around with shape keys for the next two hours. But uh, essentially, all it is is me in sculpt mode using the, the inflate and smooth brushes, and occasionally jumping it into edit mode to use proportional editing to tweak the mesh and create shape keys that I then keyframe in and out. And, and it's all just experimentation and playing, really. Um, I could have approached it in a far more organized fashion, if I'm honest, but I managed to achieve not only small. Uh, intersectional changes and bits and bobs like that, but some rather large uh, overarching changes to to the the simulation and how it how it sort of executes. So you can do some really really um, sweeping large changes to your mesh if you're careful and you you do it bit by bit. Um, it is worth noting as well that my end result of this is going to be on twos. So um, at the end of of uh, all of this, I. I, I convert it all into twos uh, on an animation wise which is a lot more forgiving with something like this whereas on ones you know you might see a bit more jittery jittery motion it might be a little less forgiving so it is worth bearing in mind that i can get away with being a little sloppier uh, because i'm planning to execute this all on twos uh, with that said after this is this time lapse is done we can we can jump into using modifiers uh with uh, with our mesh and uh, and go from there so what I'm going to do now is, because I want this, this quite powerful sort of wave, um, uh, of like this sort of, I want it to feel like it's being hit by really powerful wind. And unfortunately, the simulation just isn't quite cutting it for that. So I think I'm going to... create a selection. Calling it wave Z. I'm going to turn this on. So I just want that to kick in from here. So I can add this wave modifier because this is baked, because this is already, you know, uh, it's already a mesh. So this is possible because of the baking process. Okay, that's looking a lot more like how I wanted it. 
So now I'm going to add some corrective smoothing and solidify. So that's it. That's that's the edit, I think. Okay, so we have a cloth simulation that we've now edited in post, and uh, we're all happy with that. Now that is going to affect the hair sim because if the cloth is on the shoulders and the hair falls out of the shoulders, so I needed to. So I've added a collision um, physics collision to that, uh, and and from here we can crack on and do the hair process. Now the hair process is really similar to, um, in at least in theory, it's similar to the cloth. But it differs in one major way, and that is that you can't export an MDD directly from hair particles. So how do we get around it? Let's take a look. So what I've done is I've appended the scalp object in from the master file of my character, because when you use linked uh, libraries, um, there's some problems with linking in hair and then making local assets from it, because they, they it just goes wrong. So I'm going to go to rest pose and I'm just going to connect this up to the armature hopefully this will work just fine it's been a while since I tried this um, there we go hmm maybe it's because it's trying to do the hair dynamics straight off the bat which I don't want it to do let's turn off the hair dynamics for a minute okay it is connected that's good uh, so I'll turn my hair dynamics back on and I'm going to need to set this up. So I need to make sure my collision collection is set to my this FX final. I don't want anything from here. I don't want anything from anywhere else influencing my sim. I just want these collider objects that I'm currently working with. We'll set the field weights to the same folder. Again, we're just trying to limit what could possibly break this. And from there, I'm just going to save this before I set it going. And let's run it. OK, so the hair sim is done. And as some sort of strange cursed miracle. It's actually pre-perfect. I don't think I'm going to actually need to do any corrections on it, but I'm going to take it through the process as if I were going to, to correct. I'm sure I'll find something to fix sooner or later. Yeah, that's the way it normally goes with these things. But let's, uh, let's show you what, what I'm looking at. We've imported the hair and simulated it, and I've got a good result. I'm pretty pleased with that. So now we need to go about exporting it all. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the interpolated children. I don't need this in my export. In fact, if I put this, if I have interpolated children or simple children, if, if, if I have anything other than the guide hairs, it's going to become pretty dense and it's going to be very slow to work with. So <clears throat> we need to now take our particle simulation without children export it as an alembic. We're going to put the frame start as zero, even though our simulation starts way later. Only selected objects, making sure that we only have our scalp object selected. Tick curves as mesh. Make sure the particle system is enabled and export the Alembic. This should go pretty fast, unless you forgot to <laughs> disable children. Um, and yeah. Just watch as that scans through the uh, Alembic export. Got a little progress bar on this one. Makes it a little bit easier to gauge where we're at. Lovely. So now I can turn this off 
and bring in my Alembic. Import Alembic. Don't let it set the frame range or it'll change the frame range for you. It's quite useful to do that sometimes, but not right now. And uh, import Alembic. And you can see it's not quite right because we, have, we haven't moved the playhead to update it. Now, you might notice when we move the playhead, there's a stall on the frame. As it loads the frame, it, it's not quite lining up. The, um, the, the cache isn't loading quickly enough. It's doing something weird. And this is a problem with the Alembic caching in Blender. And I, I'm not certain if a fix is coming, but this is why we can't work directly with an Alembic. This is a problem that we have to work around. So what it's done is it's brought in two objects. So I'm just going to hide all this. It's brought in the hair, which we will rename export hair. And it's brought in the scalp, which is just the geometry of the, the scalp. It doesn't have any hairs attached to it, so that. Um, and that's great, because we are going to make use of both of these in due time. I'll turn my uh, effects folder back on. Hokey doke. So now we've got uh, the Alembic imported. We need to do some work with this. <clears throat> Essentially, I need to convert this into uh, a mesh that I can then convert into an MDD. So I'm going to snap my cursor to the world origin and create a cube. Kaboob! And we'll call this MDD export. I'm going to hide my hair object. And I'm going to open geometry nodes. Don't worry, it's going to be a real simple geometry node structure. Geometry nodes is really good for doing some really simple stuff where you don't actually have to do, uh, you know, these big complex structures. You can just use it for converting objects into other, other types of object, which is great. So I'm going to use it um, in this instance just to load. Um, bear with me. Just search for object info. There we go. And I'm going to plug the object info geometry into the output geometry. Suddenly our cube will disappear. And I'm going to choose the Alembic hair file that we brought in. And again, I'm going to have to just click the timeline for it to update properly. But we've got basically, we've got these guide hairs brought in as Alembics that we are then referencing with our geometry nodes file. Oh, sorry, with a geometry nodes object, bringing it all in. And what we can do from here is export Lightwave Point Cache MDD. Again, we're going to make sure that our start frame is zero. Uh, I'm going to call it Hair Sim. I guess this one will be Hair Sim 2. I've done a couple of test versions. And export the MDD. Now, this will not come up with a progress bar, so we're just going to have to be patient and wait. But if you click somewhere, it should go to the blue circle uh, that says the blender's thinking, and it will say not responding at the top. And it will go like that for a few minutes whilst it just runs through exporting out our MDD. And there we go. Again, if I click, it will update the frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to frame zero. And I'm going to apply the geometry nodes. And what this does now is it, it's made our, uh, our MDD, this MDD export object, static. It is no longer referencing the Alembic file. It is just a collection of edges and verts uh, that are exactly the same as the MDD cache that we just exported, which means we can import the MDD cache back into it. Again, set your start frame to zero, import the MDD, and very soon we will have a load of keyframes here and some shape keys coming up over here. Just need to wait. There we go. So now we have keyframes and shape keys. So just like the process with cloth, it has created shape keys for each individual frame 
of the MDD cache and then uh, keyframes turning those shape keys on and off. Now what we might find is that there is a slight misalignment with this. So let's go to a, a frame with some extreme motion. There. You can see that the hair is, uh, is a frame behind. So I'm just going to go in, I'm going to grab these all the keyframes, G, and just pull it a frame over. And now that's aligned properly. And yeah, we have hair that we can edit. So the trick, obviously, with this is that you need to go to the, uh, the frame you want to edit and then find the corresponding shape key, which will be yellow and have a value of one. So I can select that, go in and go to edit. Now, you can't sculpt this because it has no faces. What you can do is use edit mode and proportional editing and you can have connected only if you want to to change an individual strand or you can turn connected only off and edit the whole thing now I don't want to make any edits just yet because I'm actually pretty happy with my simulation there are a few points later on which I'm gonna to have to address but for now what I would like to do is show you the rest of the process before I start editing my shape keys and changing the hair simulation let's see what it might look like all finished up so in order to do that we need to take our guide hairs and interpolate on top of these guide hairs we need to bring in um you know use geometry nodes to flesh out the guide hairs into a, a, an appropriate groom yeah okay so I'm going to, again, I'm going to hide my MDD export. I'm going to select the scalp object that we brought in, the Alembic scalp object, and I'm going to create a new geometry node system. Again, object, oh, no, 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 no. Aha, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to select the scalp. I'm going to hit Shift A, create curve empty hair. So this will only work from, I think it's Blender 3.3 onwards. This is 3.3. Uh, You'll have loads more options in later versions of Blender, which we might investigate later. But for now, I'm just going to do that. And what it's done is it's created under my scalp object. It has created this curves, hair curves object. And again, I'm just going to go and create an object info node. Connect it to that. Can move this group input away for now. And I'm going to choose my MDD export object. And now we are bringing these curves into the hair object. So we've imported these animated simulated curves into our Blender uh, geometry nodes hair, <laughs> hair system. So in later versions of Blender, we have a number of different assets uh, for nodes, uh, for hair, hair particle nodes that can be dragged into your node tree and used to manipulate your groom. Um, I'm working with an earlier version of Blender which doesn't have that option. So what I've done is I've appended in uh, this hair system node from uh, Hay Pictures uh, on Gumroad. Hay Pictures has this uh, hair grooming system and this is the node from that. And this is what I, I, I use during codling. So that's why I'm showing you this process. I'm sure you get a lot more control with the, um, with the uh, presets that you get with Blender nowadays. But this is, this is the process I used, hence why I'm showing it this way. Don't feel that you need to go out and get this particular node system. Uh, although I do really like it. Anyway, uh, we plug it in and it doesn't work. And the reason for that is we need to take mesh to curves. Plug it in. Okay. Instant mess. Due, due to the scale of my uh, my characters and you know how this node system was set up, um, the values in it are way too high. So I'm just going to dial everything down. I'm going to remove this surface attachment. Yeah, I'm just going to turn. Basically, I'm just going to turn everything off. and then start turning stuff back on again. So I can dial up the amount of hair, but without any spreading, um, that's not going to do a great deal. So I just need to spread this a slight amount. Of 
We'll give it a little bit of messy hair. We'll change the tip shape ever so slightly. Bring some noise. Actually, with the noise, I'm not sure if the noise is intended for animating hair. So actually, I think I will turn that off entirely. Um, I do like it, but it, 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 I think it gave a bit of a warble last time I used it. I'm going to turn on some random trimming of curves. Actually, I don't want that. That's fine. Random trimming of splines, though. Yeah, we can, we can do that. Random hair displacement, sure, why not? Again, I'm not sure if that's going to work very well with the... Yeah, no, that seems okay. We can do some splitting on the tips. And then this thickness root and tip is for how it renders. So before we do that, let's add a material, set material. We'll choose my hair. And I'm going to have to turn on rendering. So let's save it as and yeah, go to our camera. I'm going to need to turn on some lights. And we can't see anything. Why is that? Because currently the hair has a thickness of nothing. So let's first put these to one and see what it gives us. Not bad. So I've got some intersections in the cloth that I'd like to fix around here. So that's around the 390 sort of range. But the hair, we have some hair whipping through there and here. It comes through the mouth about 328. So 320 to 346. So that's what we're going to focus on. So I'm going to go straight to 340. Do you know, I will turn simplify back on because it might help uh, this become a little more manageable and it shouldn't affect too much of the hair situation. And I'm just going to start advancing through these keys and I can see the hairs there. OK, now I'm not going to be manipulating this object directly. I'm going to be manipulating the MDD export. For which I will need to turn on um, my viewport overlays. I might as well get rid of this additional viewport. And I can see the hair right there. I do need to make sure that my shape key and my frame are that I've selected I guess in sync. So I'm gonna find the one keyframe that has a keyframe that has a value of one turned on, and that will be the, the active keyframe for that frame. And then I'm going to hit L to select all of this hair. I'm just going to see how bad it is. So like we've got one, two, three hairs that have penetrated the head. <clears throat> there they are. Just I've gone into local view so I can see them. 
And they've penetrated the head from quite early on. And they only release around about this point. So, to fix this, I'm going to, first I'm going to grab all of my keys, control G to group them into base keyframes. And that way when I add new keyframes to fix stuff, they'll be separate. You know, I can call these tweaks or whatever I want to, but I think for this I'll just, uh, yeah, I'm going to dial it down to zero by there, and this is where they... They are all active again. So we can't sculpt this hair, but we can use proportional editing to change stuff and get a, a bit of a, a sculpt-like experience. Um, so that's the good news. Um, what I'm gonna do is just, I'm just gonna grab these little fellas and, um, ooh, they do not like that. Yeah, connected only, I'm going to turn on so I'm not accidentally affecting other things. And I'm just going to try to pull these hairs out from where they are. Varying the amount of fall off as I go. Let's come out of local view and see where we're at. Now they're penetrating through the shoulder. Now the good thing is, I could just delete these hairs. If they are that problematic, I can just delete them. But I'm going to attempt to keep them. You can see the change I've made there, pulling the hairs out. Okay, so again, we're into time-lapse territory. Uh, I'm just adding shape keys to to just to tweak the hair and the shape of it during the, the when the, the laser blast goes off, I want the hair to, to, to be a bit more sort of wild, a bit more spread. So I'm just going in and tweaking that. It's very minor sort of stuff. Um, just selecting the ends of the hair and then pulling them about a bit just to get that, that shape a bit more to what I'd, come, I'd, I'd hope to get from the simulation. Also, I'm, I, I feel like this, uh, it, it's ending one frame early, isn't it? So um, we could easily fix that by grabbing all these keyframes and duplicating them over. Maybe one more keyframe. I'm just going to move all the hairs over here a little bit more wildly. Okay, so I've done a quick viewport render. And this is looking pretty good. There's a little bit more wave and waggle to the hair. Looks a little bit more chaotic. And the hairs here are no longer going through the chin, giving her a tiny moustache. Moustache! So there's a couple of other bits and bobs I need to fix, like the belt and these, this, an extra pass of intersections on the poncho. Um, not stuff that you need to really sit through and be bored with. So I'm going to go away, do that, and then we'll come back and do our final stage. So the final step is a fairly simple one. All I'm going to do is select my rigs, open up the NLA, and push down these action strips that, uh, you know, these, these action strips represent the animation in the scene. And I'm going to push them down and then add a step interpolation modifier to them. This will make the animation only update every other frame. And as you can see, that's uh, affecting how the, uh, the simulation and the rigged animation actually line up. So I'm just doing the, the face rig now. 
here we go and then if I select the hair this is not going to work because you won't see an animation strip on here because the animation is actually done on a different object on the MDD export object so I'll enable that grab it and we can see this key action here and this is our animation so we can push that strip down and add stepped interpolation to that and as you can see that is now back in line and I have to do the same for the poncho lovely and with that done this is basically ready to render uh, I need to render multiple passes for the background the foreground I need to do um, some grease pencil effects and then comp it all together um, but with that done Let's take a look at our final result.